This is Ryan. And I'm John. Welcome to Preview Season. Oath of the Gate Watch. <laughs> All right, we're back again for another exciting episode of our preview special, I guess we'll call it. Take 12. Take 12. Uh, this time we're looking at blue cards. We are. We are. And the best cards. There's some good ones in here for both constructed and limited, so I'll handle one and John will take the other. Yeah, I'm going to do limited because I love drafting and it's the best. And I love constructed because that is also the best. So I'll it's the best. Yeah, there's room for both. All right. <sighs> First card I got on my list, we're going to talk about Prophet of Distortion. This is the 1-2, correct? Mm, yep, it's a very frail body, but it is recurring card draw in a color that wants it, especially at instant speed, right? So if you're blue, you hold up your mana, you wait to counter something on your opponent's turn. If they play nothing, now you get to spend four and then draw a card. It's like you didn't even waste your turn. Right. Eventually your opponent's going to have to roll the dice and try to play something, but you'll probably have a handful of counter magic at that point. So um, you need some colorless mana to make it work, sure, but blue has enough other ways to use that in this set. I don't think that's a real drawback. Yeah, totally. And you can definitely build your deck so that by the time you have four mana, yes. one of them is going to be colorless. Absolutely. So I'm thinking, you know, just kind of off the cuff here, but like Reality Smasher, Thought Not Seer, and mm -hmm. Warping Whale are all cards that would fit in what I'd call colorless blue control, maybe. Um, you can even keep Ugin as your finisher or upgrade to Kozilek, you know, your call, whatever. Uh, that deck sounds amazing. Mm -hmm. I So when we were doing our previews of this set, I said I really liked Azur Mage. Yep. It's, uh, Azur Mage is a 2-1 for 2 mm -hmm. that has the same ability, only it costs blue to activate it. Yep. Um, I, like, I actually like this card better as a 1-2 that costs 1 mana because uh, 2 toughness is a lot more than 1. There's lots of totally incidental things that kind of get picked off at 1 toughness, but with this guy at 2 toughness, it's he's going to be harder to get rid yeah. of. I I really like this guy as a um, as a sideboard card. Maybe s breaks up a control matchup, gets in underneath counter magic. He's good. Yeah, he's good. Yeah, absolutely. All right, next one. Slip through space. <laughs> That's my spaceship sound. Sure. Uh, so a single mana spell that replaces itself is worth looking at for, I got two main reasons, at least in standard, right? So number one is Surge. You get to fire those off. Yep. Number two is Zada Hedron Grinder. Sure. So this would make your whole team unblockable and refill your hand. So that's not bad, even if it's at sorcery speed. Yeah. Um, it's also a common, so there is a pauper deck that this might kind of slot into. That's Nivik Cyclops and Kiln Fiend. Currently, that deck uses Artful Dodge in this slot because that one has flashback, but yeah. I think drawing a new card might be better in most situations. So I'm kind of curious to see if Slip Through Space will replace um, Artful Dodge. So unless, uh, sorry, unless I'm wrong, I, I believe Shadow Rift sees some play in Pauper, which is a one mana instant target creature gets Shadow mm -hmm. until end of turn, draw a card. Okay. And this is this just seems much better than that because yeah. you're never using that card to block something with shadow you're always using it to get in if they have a yep. shadow card it's bad but this just is unblockable um i would see this definitely replacing uh shadow rift in popper okay all right uh, how about this next one a little bit more unique i don't think you're gonna be replacing this with anything quite like it uh crush of tentacles oh yeah yeah you're right <laughs> so if slip through space is our surge enabler then this is one of the best cards that you could possibly hope to enable not only does Crush get cheaper, it gets an extra effect when you cast it at the Surge cost. So you, normally when you clear the board, you're just kind of catching up with your opponent. If they've played out a lot of creatures, you're kind of resetting things to an even playing field. Sure. But with Crush of Tentacles, now you actually come out ahead of that because you wipe the board and then you land a nice big 8-8 Octopus token. So. I hadn't looked at the art for this card yet. It is hypnotizing. There, you're underwater, yep. and you're from the perspective of the octopus, yeah. and there's like the light shining down. That is just pulling an Eldrazi I, into the deep to like smother it. That's great. That is that rules. I almost just cursed. That, <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> I didn't. Nice. And this card rules. Sure. So the other cool thing about Surge, if you remember, Rebound was a mechanic in Cons. So um, within Standard, oh, man. there's a handful of spells that are already. In 
and blue that make wow. you know, are effectively free on your next turn, right? So this makes it much easier to get something like Crush of Tentacles to fire off. Oh. Um, I found Sight Beyond Sight. That's probably the best one in blue to lead into Crush of Tentacles. That's yeah, yeah. a three and a blue for a sorcery. You look at the top two of your deck, put one into your hand and the, bo uh, the other card on the bottom, and then you rebound that. So at the start of your next turn, you get to do that again, hopefully find your fifth land, put that down, and then you can play um, Crush of Tentacles for the surge cost because you already had the free Sight Beyond Sight go off earlier that turn. So that'd be a really amazing turn four into turn five, I think. Ryan Gomez, ladies and gentlemen, uh, always looking back man. to move forward. It's like they did it on purpose. Yeah. Uh, so speaking of purpose, how about unity of purpose? <laughs> wow, I couldn't even... I'm sorry, I just That's fell into that one. Jeez. Nailed it. Yeah, so unity of purpose, right? This is yeah. three and a blue for an instant, gives you support two, and then it untaps each of your creatures with a plus one, plus one counter on it. It doesn't right. matter where those counters came from. So things like Awakened Lands are great targets for this. Sure. Right. It also plays really well with past mechanics like Graft, Outlast, Megamorph, <laughs> Evolve, Heroic, and Unleash, just to name a few. So and Undying. A, and Undying, yeah. There's a ton of ways to put plus one, plus one counters on things. So getting your whole team untapped at instant speed could be a nice trick to have on hand for maybe like a Simic deck or something. I, I don't know. There's a ton of ways to get those counters and make use of this ability. Nice. I Yeah, I like this. There's... um. There's definitely a graft deck, I believe, in Commander that this card would just be gross. And yeah. That's, that seems awesome. Sure. Uh, so the last uh, pick I've got here for blue, Deep Fathom Skulker. Now, I admit six mana is a lot to pay for a 4-4, four, four, so I want to find a home for this guy in Commander where the mana is a little bit easier to come by. Yeah. Yeah, once you get him on the table, you have a great way to force through Commander damage since you only need to deal 21 of that to win the game. Get a big Commander out there, maybe Animar, Soul of the Elements <coughs> with a few counters on him, and then you just start racking up the damage that they can't block. Sure. Uh, meanwhile, he turns all of your attacks into potential card draw, which probably puts a big target on you during a multiplayer game. Make sure you got some friends out there. You can use his ability to make your friends' creatures unblockable too. So just kind of work the political angle, pretend you're Frank Underwood, get Frank in Frank Underwood, <laughs> I love Fargo. <laughs> oh, jeez. And, uh, <laughs> and make sure that you've got your allies, you know, uh, watching your back, so. So Wonderful. Get knocked out. All right, there you go. So those are my <laughs> top picks for blue for Oath of the Gate Watch. What do you got for limited, Joe? Okay, so for limited, I've got... So for limited, we're going to do commons just because uncommons and rares you don't see as much, and it's better to have a good handle on what the commons do and how they rank mm -hmm. among themselves. So the first one I went for is a comparative analysis. That is three and a blue, so four mana altogether, and it says target player draws two cards. And it's got a surge cost that is two and a blue, so three yep. is the surge cost. So it's most of the time it's just going to be inspiration mm -hmm. with random upside that if you if you play a spell that turn you get to play it for two. Um, the last time I got to play with inspiration, which I believe was Return to Ravnica block, they had inspiration in there. It was it's a perfectly good card to have in your deck. It's not awesome. It's not going to blow your mind, but it's it's a nice. It's something nice to have access to because yeah. you're just you're always like digging to your best cards or whatever. You need to have more cards in this, and inspiration does that. But fair warning, it's not going to be very good if you're too far behind on the board. So you have to kind of get a board first and then keep up with inspiration. Correct. And just quick pointing out, this one also says target player draws two cards. So in sure. a pinch, you can have your teammate. Maybe if you're doing two headed giant, you know they've got good stuff in their deck, and you know something. Maybe they have an out that you need to draw to. Right. Um, might help you there. So be be flexible with how you cast it. It could save your save your butt. Exactly, Mundo. <laughs> Cultivator drone is up next. Now, confession time. Mm -hmm. I am unsure how scarce that colorless man is going to be in this limited environment. It is really hard to estimate that. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm not I'm not going to know until I play, but I can say that I place a higher value on colorless creatures by just by virtue of their being colorless. Mm -hmm. So um, in the Devoid decks are really strong. The yeah. synergy is super strong, and the cards are really good. The, the Devoid stuff got really pushed. So I... Going out of your way, kind of hurting yourself in the draft in order to get a critical mass of colorless creatures is going to be worth it because your deck is going to be so good. And that by itself props up the value of something like Cultivator Drone. The fact that it makes colorless mana something that we're not sure how scarce it's going to be yet. Right. So the fact that it produces that is just kind of icing on the cake. Right. But on the flip side, watch for you know signals. Don't 
get yourself cut off in a situation where the person two seats to your right or whatever is picking up all the waste and you're trying oh, to pick totally. up all the crete, you know, you're going to find that just never comes down the stream to you. So be aware if you're not seeing the right combination of, you know, lands, mana sources, and the creatures all together, you might have to switch your game plan on the fly. Great point. Jawar Isle Avenger. We talked about this guy's applications in Popper mm -hmm. when we previewed him. Yep. Now, in Limited, a 3 3 flyer for five used to be very. Very far above average. I'm talking like in uh, maybe Tempest era, so in the 90s, a 3-3 three, three flyer for five was like, you, could, you can't beat it, oh it's just gosh. the best thing there is. Uh, that's not quite the case anymore, but there's still kind of stuff all the time, uh, most recently Ghostly Sentinel, that mm -hmm. show just how good a 3-3 three, three flyer for five can get. Yeah. Um, reading Jawar Isle Avenger... As a 3-3 flyer for 3, because it's tempting to look at the upside, mm -hmm. his uh, surge cost, and be like, oh, it's just a... Right, it'll be so easy. I'll, yeah. just, I'll just do something and then play him. That's, yeah. yeah. Um, that's that's a little bit of a misnomer. Um, the cost of the other spell is kind of kind of adds itself on to Jawar Isle Avenger, but late in the game, kind of making the play of... You have 6 lands, you make a 3-drop, and then you make a Jawar Isle Avenger. That can represent a massive tempo swing in a game that would otherwise be close yep. and the great thing about it is as a 3-3 three, three flyer for 5 it's fine there too I mean this, what makes this card shine is its versatility yeah, I agree and it's interesting usually like flying you see like a 2-2 two, two for 3 is kind of where the, the bar is set on that and then there's like yeah. a big jump to get up to like a 3-3 three, three flyer it, yeah the mana cost doesn't really quite line up the same way as it does on the ground so the air you're probably going to find a bunch of like one threes or two twos or other stuff, and then this guy shows up, he'll just start eating everything else up there. So if you can stick one of these to the board, I think you'll be in really good shape. Yeah, three power and three toughness on a flyer is a big bar to cross, and they it's not the most replaceable effect. Yep. All right, next card is Blinding Drone. Um, so traditionally, tappers are really great and limited. They kind of are able to deal with your opponent's best creature at any given time. And they can be applied either aggressively, letting you attack in, or defensively, keeping your opponent's creatures from attacking. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, versatility is super important in Limited, and this is another card like um, Jawar Isle Sphinx that's... Or Jawar Isle Avenger, excuse me, that's <laughs> super versatile in the ways you can play it. Colorless mana might not be the easiest thing to find, as we've said before, right. but... The scarcity of it is the only thing balancing this guy out because if it wasn't, if it didn't need colorless mana, if it needed just generic mana, it would be insane. But on its own, this guy can just turn a game by himself. And it's funny to me, this guy is almost like better against other Eldrazi. Like he's kind of like a traitor to his own totally. team because like the bigger and better your Eldrazi is that you invested all your mana in, he just goes, nope, and he taps it down. Yeah, for... what else would you want to tap down other than an Eldrazi? I know, right? It's not like allies or anything. <laughs> all right. Uh, what I've got as the best blue card for now is uh, Gravity Negator. I was unsure which way to go for the top spot because at the end of the day, I'd be happy having both or either Gravity Negator or Blinding Drone in my deck. Mm -hmm. um, but at the end of the day, I just want the creature that's going to let me get in the most damage. And giving a random ground fatty flying is a huge deal. And I mean... This guy could go a long way to making green a playable color. I mean, just giving one of those 5-5 five, five ground guys that would normally just be gumming up the ground <laughs> some wings right. seems huge. Yeah. So unlike the blinding drone who kind of betrays his team, this guy's all about helping out his fellow giant Eldrazi. He's like, oh, you need a lift, bro? Here you go. Let's yeah. just like get you up there and you know start doing some damage. So well, it's kind of equal opportunity. Helps everyone, you know, <laughs> like fat uh, green creatures, yeah. Tajuru, whatnot. See. So Gives them all wings. He's, like, he's great. We, we have such a low opinion of green, we don't even know any of the names. <laughs> of like the, you know, those big, fat, green, stupid cards that nobody knows the name of. All right, great. Yeah. So, I, to sum up the limited kind of environment, colorless mana is going to be important. It's unclear how early to prioritize something like wastes, mm. but I think something like Cultivator Drone is 
going to have a lot of value built into it just because it produces colorless mana. Yep. And that's going to be a big deal. Yep. So overall, just kind of first impressions of blue for draft on its on its own. Oh, I like it. I like it. Yeah. Right. I um I would be very happy. I would rather draft a devoid deck in blue because stuff like cultivator drone, blinding drone, uh, gravity negator, they're all cards that I kind of like to play because they all like let me get in there and I like <laughs> being aggressive, but I it it looks um very texturally rich. Like you could go either way with it. They the cards are flexible. They let you play a controlling game or you could get real aggressive with them. I I'm super excited and that is not hyperbole at all. I am really the pre releases this weekend. Are you going, Ryan? I am going, and I'm going to hopefully do some two headed giant. And I'm, I think blue is going to be a great, kind of crucial actual color for that. One of the two decks definitely has to have blue in it with all the surge cards because that's the best way to get those to fires. Have yeah. your teammate drop something, and then you get to benefit from that. So make sure that one of you is running blue, absolutely, and, and prioritize getting those surge cards on the cheap. Yes. Ever since you mentioned that that Pongify kind of triggers, <laughs> you know, yeah. it's. It opened my mind. Great. Well, that's what we're here to do. So <laughs> hopefully you guys are learning something as you watch. Um, be sure to visit tcgplayer.com for pre-orders of all these cards and more. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Goodbye, Internet. We love you.